to blame photography. I feel like it's it works out really well when everybody kind of has like a signature shot that they're well known for, which is a really interesting thing just because most most art you have kind of a style or a thing that you can do and everything fits within this but with wedding photography they definitely has that but i really enjoy it when people have kind of a signature thing that they're well known for this was the story of the first time that i made this double exposure putting um this i don't know double exposure of the heart i don't know how to i don't have a name for it <laughs> It was the first wedding um, after I started bringing my RZ67 to weddings. And at that point, I don't think I even had any color film, which is part of the reason it was shot in black and white, but it also was winter time. It was, this was a December wedding being happening in Bellingham, Washington, which is up really close to Canada. And unsurprisingly, it was gray and it was windy and it was a little bit rainy. Um, and so, yeah. That was the scene and with that it felt like there was very few colors to be found to begin with so naturally working in black and white seemed like the, the best option uh we had started doing the session at a hotel on the bellingham bay and we were going to kind of work our way from there down to the waterfront and then loop around to the wedding venue so as we we're working our way through there i'm trying to think of a way that i can use this camera that it's different than just using my digital camera because that's one of the the, the tricky things about film, I think, is that it's really easy to just shoot like you do your digital photos, which is fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But part of the reason I do this is that I want it to be creative. I want it to be different. I want to be trying something unique. And so what trying to, and so with that, I was trying to think of what is a way that I can use this tool in a unique perspective. And so as we worked our way down onto the waterfront, we've been taking photos, we've been making portraits and stuff, and trying to find images that focused on the contrast, that focused on the sky and the water and the waves and the wind and all the stuff that was happening. But one of the things that I love about using this camera is how easy it is to make double exposures. Um, it's just like one little switch, you flip, and then suddenly it starts to just stack them. But to do that on top of the giant um, view screen inside of it really makes it a lot easier to make the double exposures because it's easy to mark, in, like as I'm looking through the, the viewfinder, it's easy for me to mark something and to be able to place it so that I can then put the next thing on top of it in a correct space. And so as I was working with Corey and Kristen here, I wanted a photo that built the connection between the two of them into one image. And that's obviously where a double exposure came in. And so I started off with the first, the first photo being of Corey's lapel and directly of his heart. And then placing the second photo of just placing Kristen right there on that same, on, in that same spot on her heart, on his heart. And it really worked. It was exactly what I wanted to do, trying to make an image that was photographically interesting, but at the same point also drew the connection between the two of them that, you know, metaphorically and literally placed her on his heart. And it came out really well and has been a photo I've recreated a bunch of times since then um, and has become kind of a signature of my style. But it is really fun to look back and to see the very first time that I tried to make that photo and to remember the ways that my brain kind of stacked it all together to make this exposure and to make this memory um, locked into that one day on Bellingham Bay.